Hi guys! Okay, so this week you got a kit with some different items in it and I wanted to show you what you can do with these items. The first kit for the mirror will be a piece of cardstock with some jewels and a mirror. And what you can do with this kit is you can decorate your cardstock any way you choose. With this I used uh, crayon and then I went in with black sharpie and made a design. And then I added my jewels to it and then you just glue your mirror in the center. You can also back this with cardboard if you need it a little uh, less wobbly. And then you have your own framed mirror that you've made. So that's the first kit. The second kit is a little more complicated and has a, a few different items in it. In the second kit, you're going to find some colored paper, you're going to find a little container of salt, um, you're going to find also another mirror, your cardstock, and I wanted to show you some of the things that you can make with this. And uh, also there's a little butterfly in your kit. If you need glue for either of these projects, make sure you let us know we have plenty of glue that we can send home with you. Um, this, my salt is a little messy because of the way that I stored it, so once you do it, you'll definitely want to be careful with it because it is a little bit fragile. Um, but it's held up pretty good considering that I didn't really, really take too good a care of my salt painting. Um, but this is just an example one, so uh, I'm going to show you some of the things that you can do to do these different design elements that I've done and give you some ideas of other ways that you can use the stuff in your kit to make a really cool mirror. Okay, one of the first things you're going to find in there is a little white butterfly on cardstock, and that's just so you can trace out butterflies of your own. There's some colored paper in there, you can use that to make butterflies. You can also use things you find around your house, wrapping paper, packaging paper, uh, any piece of paper you have that's colorful, uh, pages from old books uh, that you would like to use for this project would make really great butterflies. So all you do is you trace it out, cut out your butterfly, and then you take your butterfly and you fold it and crease it along both sides of the middle of the butterfly. And that's going to give you a butterfly that looks a little bit three-dimensional and stands out from your frame. There you go, just like that. And then you put the glue down the flat side there and attach that to your frame. And you can do as many of these butterflies as you'd like. I did three on our example, so you can kind of see how they look clustered together. Um, another thing that I was thinking about you could do is you can trace around the edges with marker or even glitter pen um, and really dress up your butterflies and do them however that you would like to. So that's the butterflies. One of the really cool things that we're going to let you learn this time uh, is salt painting. This is something that I saw and I thought it was so beautiful. I love the way the colors come out. In your kit, you have a little watercolor kit to work with your salt painting, and you also have salt. If you need glue, just let us know. So salt painting is where you put your glue down in whatever design you'd like to, and then sprinkle it with salt while it's still wet. Let that dry completely. It's very, very important. If you try to paint your salt while the glue is still wet, the paint does run and kind of mar your page and it won't look as good. So you want to really give it overnight to dry. Um, in the one, in the example that I did, I framed around the mirror with the salt and glue and then I did a design coming out. You can color your card stack stock beforehand. You can magic marker, you can paint, you can do anything you want with your background and then add the salt over the top of it if you'd like. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick example of how to do the salt painting. Okay, in this example I'm just going to make a quick spiral. One of the important things you want to remember about salt painting is you don't want your glue lines to be too close together because they will bleed into each other. You could do all sorts of cool things with this idea later. You could make uh, a trace over a picture that's already there and add uh, a dimension of salt painting over the top of it. You can do whole pictures with salt painting kind of whatever you want to do with it. It's just a really cool technique that there's a lot that you can do. Once the glue is in the design that you want it, you just sprinkle the salt right over the top. And if you find that you've done more glue than you have salt to sprinkle, once you get the glue covered with the salt, you can remove it, save it, and put it back over the areas that you didn't get to put the salt on. 
So I've got my whole spiral completely covered with salt. And I'm just going to grab a piece of paper. To sprinkle my salt onto so I can put it back in the container and use what didn't get used again. So just pick that up. Okay. I'm going to kind of shake the salt off of it onto the paper. And you want to make sure you get all that loose salt off of there. And there you go. There's a spiral. Now you want to set that aside and let it dry really good before you try applying the watercolor to it because otherwise, like I said, it runs and it doesn't dry properly. So I have one that I did yesterday and I will show you quickly how to do the watercolor portion of this. Once your, your art is completely dry, then you just take your watercolors and you'll need a little cup of water to go with this. And the key to this is really just dripping the color onto it. So I'm going to get a little bit of color, and you want to get your color nice and wet. And then just drip a little bit of color onto your salt. And see how bright the colors come up? Get a little bit more. I'm going to do my dots here in purple. And then clean your brush out really good between colors. And I'm going to do a bright blue. A little more water. So you just barely tap the salt with the brush. And the water in the brush will come right off and bleed into the salt with your color. And you can even do different colors right next to each other. So that was a pretty blue. Let's do a bright green. So what's cool about this is that you can really do whatever you want. Everyone's is going to be different. And I hope you guys will bring your artwork by and let me see how it all turns out. There, just like that. And then you let that dry completely. And if you happen to have on hand any kind of uh, sealant, if you really want to preserve this, you could spray it with a spray sealant. And that would help hold it as well. There, I've got a little red. And now I'm going to put just a little bit of a yellow in there. myself a little rainbow effect. I'm going to start that towards the middle because I really want it to bleed towards the other colors, but I don't want it to you know, be too into the other colors. There we go. And that is salt painting. These last two elements that I want to share with you guys are the paper spirals and the paper flowers that we made. These are very, very simple. There's a lot of different ones online that you can look up um, and do in different ways. So I just wanted to give you a couple of easy examples to start with. Uh, first, the paper spiral. Okay, so all you do is you take a piece of paper, and I'm going to make a nice bend in it here so I can start rolling it. So we're going to roll it up kind of like a straw. And it might even be easier to fold it instead of roll it, depending on what works for you. So I'm just going to kind of, because you want it flat when you're finished anyway, so just kind of rolling that up. I didn't get a very straight edge on that, but that's okay. It'll be fine. Now, once you've got it rolled up, see I've got some pieces that kind of stick out a little bit, and that's just going to make it hard for me to roll that into a spiral, so I'm just going to cut that off to make it a little bit easier for me. Okay, and then you want it nice and flat. Okay, and 
once you've got it flat, you're gonna start rolling that up into a spiral. So just bend the edge over to make the middle of your spiral and then just start rolling it up on itself. And then once you get it started, you can kind of pick it up. And this too can be done with newspaper or magazines or basically any uh, type of paper you have laying around the house. I think it'd be really pretty with tissue paper too. Um, so if you have any old wrapping paper laying around, that kind of thing, you could make some really cool spirals with that. Okay, and then once you've got it all rolled up into a spiral, now you're going to take a bit of glue and put some glue underneath the flap and fold that over, and then you can use a paper clip just to clip that into place. And you wanna let that dry really good before you try to glue it onto your project, otherwise it will come undone really easily. And, uh, also, this could make a really cool design. You could have a bigger open spiral. There's a lot of different things that you can do with this technique. So experiment, try something, you know, a little bit different. And then the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to make these paper flowers. These are the easiest paper flowers. And all you do is you take a square of paper. And I'm gonna cut those sharp corners off to make it a little bit easier for me. And again, you can use any kind of paper that you want. You can use uh, any colored paper, newspaper, whatever you like uh, to experiment with here. And now we're going to cut a spiral into it. But the thing about this spiral that we're going to cut, you want to make sure that you don't use too solid of an edge. So I kind of move my scissors around a lot when I'm cutting it. Make it a little bit uh, curvy along the edges of your cut. And that will give your flower a lot more dimension. If you make it straight, then your flower will have uh, very straight petals. And then as you're cutting it towards the middle, you're gonna leave a little round circle there at the very base of it, and that's what you're gonna attach your flower to. See, I've left this area right here. Okay, so then you have something that looks a little bit like this. Now you're gonna start with this outer edge and you're gonna roll this up as well, just like you did the other paper. And then once I get it going good, I try to make it a little bit rounder. Keep rolling. And like I said, there's a lot of different types of flowers that you can make. So you could check out YouTube videos on how to make paper flowers and find different ones that you can experiment with. And you can use all sorts of different kinds of paper. These are just some ideas to kind of get you started and give you uh, ideas on where you can take your art. And these are real basic techniques that anybody can do this. And I think one of the important things to remember about learning a new technique and trying something new is it may not go quite right the first time you do it, and that's okay. That's totally all right. That's how we learn. Okay. So now I've got it all rolled up, and then I've got this area right here. I'm going to take my glue, put some glue on the base part right here. And then I'm going to put my flower down right on top of that glue, and that's going to help hold it in place. And then I'm going to loosen up my flower just a little bit. Make it just a little bit bigger. And then as you loosen it up, see how that middle kind of sinks down in there just a little bit? Okay. 
And there's a paper flower. Well, I hope you guys have fun with some of these techniques. Try them out, see what you like, and I can't wait to see what it is that you create with your mirror frame. Have fun!